You just need to check there's nothing hiding when you drop. Cool. Neil the half melted dog. Yeah. A slide that melts things. I know, it's just things do not seem to go well when you mess around with the slide projector. Stage four. Like almost the epicenter. Yeah, stage three. And then the dump's all on the far side. This. Stage three. Get this weapon mod as well. Do, do, do. All right, stage three then. Ordinary A to E stage three. Public school. Tom and the others had gotten worse, scarier. The math teacher, Mrs. Chester, tried to make them listen, and they pushed a piano on her and broke her legs. Uh, I think I need to sneeze. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, sneeze on street. Ugh. Then Tom bashed her head in. Bye bye, Mrs. Chester. I always liked her. I liked math. That was the tipping point. It was Lord of the Flies level bad. The grown ups realized something was wrong. The police came and literally dragged Tom and Hugo and the others away. Tom was screaming that the Knott's mother would make them all go away. They enacted a curfew for every kid in ordinary. Mum and Dad were pissed, asking us about the dump, about everything. I remember wanting them gone, like Tom had said. When we woke up the next morning, pretty much all the adults had just vanished. Was I responsible? Did I? I don't know. Disappearance of majority of Ordinary's population confirmed to result from slide projector related AWE. Yeah, but is it the slide projector? Is it the Knot Mother that they found while using it? Uh, starting to see a pattern I don't like. Yeah. Like, it seems they played around with the slides quite a bit, but... Well, basically, they used the slide projector to unlock um, different dimension portals, right? Also, what? Oh, okay, it's just it's wood. Okay. I didn't want to destroy the whole thing, but I thought there might be something hidden inside the red house. I suppose that's the public school, actually. Reaper says, it will be optimized, but overcomplicated for the entity management that this project needs. But it's a project to learn. It's not a problem to do a few classes more than what I need. True. If you've got the time and you've got the motivation, there is no reason not to. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll destroy this environment anyway. Yeah, if you've got the, the time and the motivation to, there is no reason not to learn and carry on using a new skill that back at you my friend most people like probably wouldn't want to um, work in their off time but with programming it's a bit different in that you can always do you can always do more as a hobby uh, whoa God. We found the slide projector in the dump outside town. scared <sighs> Always getting scared by those suddenly appearing hiss. Alright, so they've got a recreation of Ordinary, so they must have a recreation of the slide projector as well, if not the actual slide projector. <sighs> I think I saw a tweet recently about um, the hiring process for some company in Silicon Valley. Uh, I think I actually know it was someone working for Blizzard, right? And he was saying... Uh, when we ask people in an interview, what do they program in their spare time? Someone says, uh, we don't have the time to. And they're like, that's not good enough. By Thomas Zane? Yes. We all leave the shadow and settle for him. There's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Zane. What? I don't know, matter. It suits you very well. The poem. How you see things. Maybe you wrote it yourself. I didn't. Hold it, Thomas Zane, though? You've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. 
Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um, it's this, I feel an emptiness, a yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No. Brother? No. What? Dylan's not dead. Yeah. Why would they lie to her about that? Referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood, the office. She's come back after a long time. She's calling me. In a dream I saw, she she showed me things. Jesse, it felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown that you believe Polaris caused. No. It wasn't an accident. Polaris was the result. Industrial accident, and Polaris didn't cause it. Oh, okay. There we go. She saved me and Dylan. Jesse. No. It was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly. She knew about the Bureau. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something, something hugely important. Before the hiss invade. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. So most of these therapy sessions have been happening in 2010, but this game takes place in 2019. I don't know if there's a date going by the multimedia. Uh, Polaris, no. There's no dates here, which is odd. Hmm. That's very specific and very recent too. So how did that get to the Bureau? Considering... What, Jesse was based in Wyoming, I'm thinking? And then, obviously, in New York is a fair distance away. So how did that get there? Hmm. Okay. Ordinary supplement. Anything else? Yep, door to walk through. Hmm. Alright, so, ordinary supplement. Case files. Here we go. Ordinary ADU E24. Details are largely based on interviews conducted with Dylan Faden. He interviews blank and blank for relevant information. And the obtained therapy sessions of Jesse Faden, as well as circumstantial evidence found at the ordinary site. Note that accounts provided by all three sources contain conflicting data. Example. DF claims there were eight slides for the projector. JF mentioned nine. The Bureau found one intact slide, designation 36, and the burnt, rem burnt remains of six others. Unfortunately, these slides are too badly damaged to be used in the projector. Jesse Faden is believed to be the individual responsible for burning the slides. Dr. Darling has ordered that the entirety of the ordinary town dump be brought to the Bureau for examination and analysis, with the hopes of finding additional slides or other altered materials. Due to the limited space in the investigation sector, this ADWE will be investigated in the containment sector. How is... How do you have limited space in a house that moves and is functionally infinite? You know? I guess the sector, the investigation sector itself is what's limited, but could they not expand it? Ordinary dump. Wow. Okay. They moved the whole landfill here in the middle of New York. Yeah. And nobody saw a thing. Well. Pretty unbelievable. I don't think it's necessarily nobody saw a thing, Jesse. It's more like they dealt with the problem if anyone did see it. Dump cessation of work order. Okay, so. Uh-huh. Correspondence. Here we go. Ooh, excuse me. Okay. Did like a small hiccup burp thing? Sorry. By order of Dr. Darling, all work in the ordinary dump is to stop effective immediately. Resources will be allocated to the blank department. Details will be forthcoming. 
This area will be sealed at the end of the month. Please remove all personal effects before that time. Any photographic slides of the type used in slide projectors found in the area should be delivered to Dr. Darling immediately. Why would they stop working on it? Also, how the hell am I supposed to find anything in here? Try going and get a better look from above. Globe supplement. So, the globe. Case file. Wolf Globe AI-72. The item was found in the penthouse suite at Blank Toronto belonging to David Wolf, who is being investigated for illegally dealing in altered materials. See Case 13HQ37. Your own agents raided his penthouse and found numerous paranatural belongings, including blank blank and this item. Mr. Wolf was arrested. With an article from the Toronto Daily. So why would a 36-year-old Bay Street investment trader, filthy rich, married to a model, disappear overnight? That's the question that's kept Toronto high society up at night this past week. Police say it's being looked into. Some nutjob radio show in the States claims he appeared to dis disappear to join the Illuminati. But it's this reporter's opinion that Mr. Wolf, bored of his job, sick of his family, left it all behind to retire in some remote beach paradise. Now he's sipping my ties while the world thinks he's dead. I mean, why? If you're filthy rich, you want to carry on living the filthy rich life. People don't disappear unless something's threatening them. Alright. So that's that done. Explode you. <laughs> They're slowly making their way up the stairs. Sure thing, buddy. Sure thing. I'll just wait for you up here. And, uh, yeah. You see if you can reach me. Thank you. Ooh, hello. I mean, this is a very obvious advantage in this game of if you're above the enemy, there's not really much they can do to you. That's why enemies that fly so much are such a problem. Also, the flying enemies seem to have more health if you don't hit them with a uh, launch. Get a good chunk of you. I just know there's going to be an example of one of these enemies slowly walking up the stairs. And I'm going to get spooked by them. Jump scared. I can hear them. I know they're coming for me. Alright, that's one. There we go. Oh, I can hear them because they're at the bottom floor. Right, I see. Come on. Make your way up here, buddy. There we go. Right, more? Again? Yep, more. Okay. Yeah, these guys can't really do too much when you can't fly. We should check that lab. We should indeed. All right, let's get the health up. Pick up all the materials. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. Oh, you can get jukebox tokens as drops. Right. I thought that you would only ever be able to make them. Well, that makes things a little bit easier when doing the expeditions. I mean, I haven't done any of those yet, but... Uh, you know, if I can pick up jukeboxes just by killing normal enemies, then that's great. Alright, so what's this? And we won't press the big red button before we go into the lab. But I am just going to keep checking corners. Alright, uh, yep, there's another box up there. 
I wonder if there's a file in the middle of here as well. So, yeah, there's nothing there. That's good. One side checked off. Yeah, these bureau alerts just seem to come up like every 15, 20 minutes or so. And I've not done a single one yet. I don't think you get much out of it other than, you know, resources for grinding and so on. So, what was the last thing we picked up? Flexible wise. Nope, nothing. Cool. Alright. Go into the, the lab. Aha! Sneaky. More stuff. Ooh, dodge efficiency. How much dodge efficiency do I get? Is it better than 33% recovery speed? No, not really. Alright, lab. More stuff. Seize accelerator. And what is this? Oh, it's Darling. Effective immediately. I'm sending the camera zooming in. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to. I, I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. Well, that's suitably unnerving. The face of the enemy completed. Finish Tango. Oh, we're going to just go and talk to Artie. It's been a while since I checked in with Artie, actually. So, what was the big red button for? Ah, we have to go to Ashtray Maze. Ah, uh, okay. Hopefully, we understand how to uh, figure out Ashtray Maze now. So, Ashtray Maze... Yeah, there's... Ooh, can I go straight forward to Sterling? Hmm. I guess not, because the thing's not open. Hmm. Alright, well, I guess we'll come back to Sterling ADV later. Alright, let's just double check what missions we've got. So, yep, just those. That's fine. Uh, let's go... Ooh, ooh, abilities. What should I get luck? More health is handy. Having more energy is handy too. Uh, let's go for more health. Ta -da. And I need... Really, only another two points for the maximum. Interesting. Okay. And then Astral Constructs, I should be able to upgrade something. Let's do Shatter. Okay. And then what we can do is we can fast travel. Uh, ooh, yes, so we do need to go to Ashtray Maze next. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to Central Executive and talk to people like uh, Marshall and Emily and uh, see if there's anything interesting there. Imaginary Idiot says, I'm, I'll be off. Take care. Bye, Imaginary Idiot. Thanks for joining the stream. We'll see you again soon enough. Oh. I hope the, the, the appearance is to your liking in terms of, you know, fully shaved head. I am in the process of, like, cutting the stream up into, like, a small video. So it's not, like, the whole two-hour stream uh, for YouTube. Uh, but I'm not finished yet. But hopefully I'll get it done soon enough. Right, so... Arish, anything new? Man, I never thought I'd be working in the executive sector. Look at me now, Mom. 
So, nope, nothing new for you. You don't have to go anywhere, Arish, don't lie. Aha! Emily! Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? Mm -hmm. The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That what? thing's not getting away this time. I was just there. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the his babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different his corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. Classic scientist. Mr. Tomasi. Okay. So, working with Darling, studying Dylan and Jesse. So, that's working with Darling. I've been seeing these Darling presentations all over. Seems like he enjoys the limelight. So, you noticed, huh? When he recruited me out of college, he actually came to visit. He interrupted my physics course by shouting, uh, not quite, professor, and then marching down to the front of the class where he proceeded to berate the very idea of laws of thermodynamics. He's been a showboat all his life. He does seem it. Darling visited you in college? Yeah, he read a paper I'd published, came to recruit me for the bureau. I accepted and then spent years waiting for access to the confidential research that Darling promised me. Whenever I ask about my access level, he just mumbles that it's temporarily postponed and then changes the subject to the effect of entropy on... So that's why her clearance is only level two. I wonder who or else three. Darling hit his work from. Marshall? Trench? That's probably why Trench didn't like Darling that much. Studying Dylan. Have you learned anything about Dylan's condition? Only that he's definitely his, but... I guess his chanting made that pretty obvious. No, interestingly, the words of the his incantation have an average length of four letters. The most common word used seven times is want. The next most common are through and time. Very interesting, don't you think? I have no idea. I don't care about the words. What about my brother? Right. Sorry, I got a little off track. Well, strangely, his tissue samples all look healthy. Unlike the other his I've tested. That's good news. Right? Must be. A little bit. And Jesse herself. I wanted to talk to you about the crazy things I can do. My abilities. I get the sense that they're not very... Usual around here. Well, usual and unusual aren't really benchmarks at the Bureau, but... For some perspective, Director Northmore once used a floppy disk to send a bowling ball six yards through the air, and that was considered a huge deal. So compared to that, you are most certainly an outlier. The most para powerful an para outlier. utilitarian. I like the sound of that. Outliers not always necessarily good, though, Jesse. I should get going. Don't let me hold you up. Okay, so uh, this room. Has this room changed? I don't think so. Would have seen more files on the desk if so. Alright, well, that's that. So, let's go ahead and show off that costume that I got. Outfits. Oh, I actually got two. So, this is the asynchronous suit, which is quite nice. Because this is me dressing as Essage. And this is as P7. Oh, that's terrible. But I like the asynchronous suit. So I'm going to wear this for a bit. Pretty cool. So if that's where Arisha is, where's Marshall? Uh, Marshall? Where are you? Where is she? How you doing, guys? Anybody inside the shelter? Because they're scared? Wow, there are. I was not expecting people to be in here. They're probably thinking to me, close the damn door! Alright, we'll close that. Um, right. So, that mission for Tomasi. Locate his corrupted Tomasi. Oh, he disappeared. We didn't actually kill him, did we? Right. Alright, let's see if we can chase him down. So, he needs to be near the turntable. 
So the closest one would be the transit corridor. And we'll see if we can find him. What makes Tomasi special compared to the other people that have been turned into Hiss? I mean, he floated, right? But otherwise, the other Hiss that have transformed people we just killed, like uh, Horowitz or um, Salvador. Nothing too unusual about those guys. So, yeah. What makes Tomasi different? 